everybody. I'm Connie Stewart with simplysimplestamping.com. I'm so glad that you guys could join me for my master class series here in the month of January 2021. Uh, I'm going to be featuring some different techniques throughout the month. Now, last week I shared with you 15 great ways to work with uh, dry embossed images. Well, now we're going to flip it and we're going to work with heat embossed images. This is where we're going to bring in our heat tool or also known as a heat gun. We're going to use embossing powder, melt that embossing powder to create a gorgeous image. Now, if you're new to heat embossing, I think you're going to be really glad that you're here. If you are a seasoned stamper, you've been heat embossing for a while. I hope that in today's video series that you're going to find some new and unique ways to use your heat embossing tools. So are you ready to get started? All right, let's get to heat embossing. All right, let's go over the basics of heat embossing to get started. You're going to need a few tools. Uh, you're going to need a heat gun or a heat tool. Uh, this is kind of the essentials for using embossing powder because it's the heat from this tool that's going to melt the powder uh, and give it that nice glossy finish. Now, I've had people ask me, well, can't I just use my blow dryer, Connie? I mean, do I really need a special tool? Actually, you do. A blow dryer, although it does get hot, it blows air, right? Well, that's going to blow your embossing powder right off the cardstock. Not a good idea. So you are going to need a heat tool or a heat gun. Next, you're going to need a certain kind of ink. Now, I've got good news for you. We're actually going to talk about several different types of ink today. The Versamark uh, watermark stamp pad is probably one of the basics that we use quite a bit, but stick around. I'm going to show you some other ways you're going to be able to emboss. And of course, you're going to need embossing powder. Now, the embossing powder uh, right now with Stampin' Up, it comes in four colors, gold, silver, white, and clear. Now, be sure to check out your mini catalogs from time to time because sometimes Stampin' Up! will come out with some different types of embossing powder, maybe some with a little glimmer to them or maybe in black and some other colors. So, uh, And I know many of you might already have embossing powder because let me tell you, this little jar, although it seems small, trust me, it's going to last you a long, long time. So that's the basics. Now let's go ahead and do just a very quick lesson in heat embossing. All right, now before you get started with embossing, I do recommend that you get a piece of some copy paper, some junk mail, something underneath you because when we sprinkle this powder, it's gonna kinda wanna go everywhere and we wanna be able to have a piece of paper so that we can contain it and pour it back into the jar. So I've just got some simple copy paper. Now, before we get started, we need to kind of prep the cardstock just a little bit. Uh, many of you might already have this little guy. It's called an embossing buddy. And you can rub this over your cardstock. There's just a nice little powder in here. Can't really tell you what it is. Maybe some people have said cornstarch. And I'm not sure. But what this is going to do, it's going to de-stickify, de-grease my cardstock. I've been handling it. If I had hand lotion on, well, that can get onto my cardstock. And guess what? That's sticky. That means my embossing powder could stick to it as well. Now, Stampin' Up! no longer sells this embossing buddy, but not to worry because I've also found a used dryer sheet does great. You do want to make sure it's a used one and just kind of give your cardstock a nice little rub down before you start. Again, it's just going to make sure we have a nice, uh, clean, non-greasy surface. All right, let's go ahead and we're going to come in with our Versamark pad and I'm going to ink up my stamp and stamp it onto my cardstock. Now, a Versamark pad is a sticky pad. It's really meant for embossing. It also gives a nice watermark as well, but you notice you can hardly see that at all on, on white cardstock. So let's sprinkle our silver embossing powder. Oh, now you can see it. You're gonna wanna make sure you get all the little edges. I'm good with that. I'm gonna tap the back of it. I wanna make sure I release everything. And I want you to see, there's no, what I like to call embossing boogers. <laughs> there's no little strays. If you do find that you have a little bit of a stray uh, bit of embossing powder, I keep just a little paintbrush and you could just brush away. If you've got a little spot that just got a little, like I said, just a little booger on there and you want to take it off, just a little paintbrush. Okay, now before I get started, I want to get this back in the jar right away because the last thing I want to do is start heat setting with all that. I'm going to have a huge mess on my hands. So I'm just going to tap my paper. 
Um, I'm going to do it here, but I'll be honest with you guys. I actually always do this over my trash can because I don't want any of that powder on my tabletop. I want to make sure it's very clean. So just to make sure, let's take my little dryer sheet, make sure that's good and clean. Okay. I want to get this out of the way before I start to do my heat setting. Again, I don't want to run the risk of getting my heat tool and the heat from that anywhere near that. Okay. Next tip, you want to preheat your heat tool, okay? What I found is if I try to heat set this and this is cold, it takes a while for that uh, for the heat to really get going and melt that embossing powder. And there's a trick to getting that without warping my cardstock. So let's preheat this. I'm going to turn it on for probably about 45 seconds is enough to make sure it's good and hot. All right, I've got my um, heat tool all nice and warmed up, so it's time to emboss. Couple tips, um, when you go to heat set this, you're going to want to stay, I'm gonna say a good three inches away from your cardstock. Now, some people like to heat emboss the top, some people like to heat emboss the bottom. There's no right or wrong. It really is just a personal preference. I tend to do it up at the top so I can watch it melt. Uh, once it's melted, I know I can move on. Now, before I turn this on and show you how to do it, I just want you to, again, see, keep it about three or so inches away, and you're just going to keep rotating the heat tool back and forth, up and down, Keep it moving. Remember, the key is we don't want to warp that cardstock. If we get too close, if we get in a hurry, we kind of have a mess on our hands. So let's get to embossing. I want to stop for just a minute and zoom in so that you can see. Can you see what's nice and shiny and what is still dull? Well, shiny means I'm done. I've melted. It's given me what I want. Dull means I still have some work to do. Let's keep heat embossing. And there we go. Now, I don't know if you can kind of see, the cardstock has warped just a tiny bit. Now, I'm not too concerned about that because obviously I'm going to adhere this down onto a project, so I'm good. But can you see there's a lot of shine going on there? And that's obviously the look that we're going for. If you find when you look at it in the light that there's a little spot that you didn't quite get, not a problem. Just come back, hit it with your heat one more time. You're going to be good to go. Now, we've got a lot of tips, tricks, and techniques to show you today on heat embossing. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, at the beginning, I showed you using the Versamark pad. But did you know that you can also stamp in any of our 50 colors? You sure can. Now, for this, we're going to use clear embossing powder because obviously we don't want this to be in, you know, silver, gold, or white. So we're gonna use a clear embossing powder. Now you notice this time I have mine in a little bowl. Uh, I do that because I use my clear quite a bit. So what I wanna do, I've got a little plastic spoon in here. I wanna begin by getting that powder on the spoon because for this particular technique, we need to work very, very fast. I'm gonna give my cardstock a rub down. Let's come in. I'm gonna use the uh, Magenta Madness. So I'm gonna ink up my stamp. And guys, you've gotta work very, very quickly with this technique. I'm going to stamp. I'm going to sprinkle it with the embossing powder, tap off that excess. Do you see how dull it is? Yep, now let's heat set. My heat tool is warmed up. Let's move everything out of the way. Again, we don't want anything to interfere with that heat. Now we heat set. Now remember, just like we did before, we're going to keep this about three inches away and keep moving the heat tool around. Again, we don't want that cardstock to warp, so we wanna keep that heat moving. If you find it is starting to warp a little, go ahead and flip it over and go to the back side for just a little bit. Again, you just kinda keep moving it around, keep that heat moving. It's gonna keep our cardstock looking nice and pristine. And can you see, there is that gorgeous flower. And now it has a nice shiny look to it because we simply added clear embossing powder. Remember, the key is you have to work very, very quickly. Make sure you're ready to go with that clear embossing powder before that ink has a chance to dry. 
What about giving an entire card some shimmer and shine? Here, I've used the Buffalo Check background. Can you see how shiny that is? Now for this card, I use the Versamark. Remember, we used this at the very beginning of the video. And I simply stamped my Buffalo Check background in Versamark, stamped on my cardstock. I sprinkled it in the clear embossing powder. That's the one that I just used. And that gave me a really nice shine. So we've stamped and embossed with a Versamark pad. We stamped and embossed with a colored ink pad. Now let's talk quickly about the craft pad. This is the Whisper White craft pad. Now this one is very different. It's not like a normal ink pad. It's very, very spongy. It's very wet. Now when you get the um, Whisper White craft pad, it is uninked. But not to worry, it actually comes with the reinker. So when you buy the ink pad, you get the reinker as well. When you get this, you're going to want to shake this bottle really, really, really well. All right. Give it a really good shake. And I've got just a plastic spoon here I'm going to use to help me in uh, spreading this ink around. Do you see? It's just a very thick, thick ink. You're going to cover your ink pad. I like to go both directions back and forth, up and down, get that well inked. And now I can simply take that plastic spoon and I'm just gonna spread it around like I'm putting peanut butter on toast. So we'll get that all kind of pressed down. I'm not pressing heavy into the pad. I want that ink to kind of stay right there on top, but I wanna make sure I have a very good coverage all over that very, very spongy pad. So when you ink up your stamp, I want you to tap on this ink pad very, very lightly. You don't have to press too hard because we don't want, I think you can see, there's just a little bit there on the edges. If we press too hard, we're going to have a huge inky mess. So just like you were kissing a bunny, just tap, tap, tap. Um, I like to move kind of around the ink pad, getting as much ink. Now, do you see that really nice coverage we have on there? Okay. I'm going to bring in that wonderful used dryer sheet. Now this is black cardstock. So boy, we really want to make sure we don't have anything sticking to this except the, uh, the embossing powder that we want. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment. Now this is called pigment ink, and that means it's going to stay wet for a, quite a long time. So I don't have to be in too much of a hurry. Now I can take this. I can sprinkle it with my clear embossing powder because it is white, or I can sprinkle it with the white embossing powder. Either one is going to work. So we'll sprinkle this on. Remember, give it a little tap on the back. I've got just a few little embossing boogers that I want to just brush off of there and get them out of the way. Now I can heat set this. And I'm going to get this look. Now, I'm going to share with you just a fun little technique that you can do when you stamp white on black or some of our other colors. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to bring in that ink pad, that craft white ink pad. I've got a sponge dauber, and I'm going to just ink up that sponge dauber with some white ink. Now, I'm going to tap some of it off because I want to keep this really light. I'm going to give this a look like a chalkboard. Again, just kind of tapping it off. You want this super light. It's just going to kind of give this nice, I'm going to definitely get the edges. Can you see how it's kind of looking a little bit like a chalkboard? And if you've got anything that's just a little on the heavy side, let's just take a tissue and just kind of buff that. Remember, it's very wet. So I have the ability to kind of buff some of that away. And now you can see we've got the look of chalkboard. Let me show you a completed card. Uh, just let your faith be bigger than your fear. Everything will be okay. By the way, this Just Jade color here, also the look of a chalkboard. If you guys remember the old chalkboards way back when, they were kind of close to this color. So you don't have to stick to black to create that chalkboard look. Look at some of your other colors, maybe pretty peacock. There are some other great chalkboard colors in there that you can use that technique on. We need to clean this ink, right? So I don't want to get that white ink all over my chamois because I don't want it to transfer onto my other stamps. So you know what I do? 
I use the back side of my chamois strictly for cleaning my craft ink. Now you can even take this and just run it under water. Um, I don't want to recommend that you do that too terribly often, but if it's just an occasional thing that you use the white craft ink, you're welcome to do that. But you see, all I have to do now is just rinse this under my sink and that white craft ink is long gone. You see, my stamp is clean as a whistle. I mentioned that our embossing powder also comes in gold. And I thought this was a fun technique. I just made panels. I stamped them in four different stamps. This is all from the same stamp set, by the way. Textures Essentials. And you see, I just used all four of those stamps. I stamped and embossed in our gold ink. And then that gold metallic edge ribbon just really lent itself to all that shimmer and shine on a really quick thank you card. Speaking of that gold ink, here is a fun technique. If you want to do something, oh, that's just very um, kind of vintage and ancient. To do this technique, I took my Versamark pad and I have just a card base here and you just simply swipe the edges and then I sprinkled it with a gold embossing powder and heat set. Now I can use that as a backdrop Oh, maybe for something like that. So it gives it a really nice look. I could even sponge some more antique colors, maybe some soft suede over that. And hey, while I've got this one out, I guess we'll move on to our next technique. This one was done with dry embossing. I dry embossed on a piece of cardstock and uh, I tapped my very vanilla um, cardstock with the Versamark pad and then I sprinkled it with the gold embossing powder and that gave it a really nice vintage look as well. Here's another one. So for this one I embossed a piece of Blushing Bride cardstock but instead of the Versamark pad I tapped it with the Whisper White pad. So just tap 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 rub 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 it's kind of however you feel like you can get that ink on there. The idea is that we don't want down inside the groove. So you're just gonna take it nice and slow and we can ink up that cardstock. See how it looks there? Then we can sprinkle it again. We can either sprinkle it with white or with clear embossing powder. And that is the fabulous image we get. I think that's gonna be a great background for a card, don't you? Tone on tone. I hope that you guys can see what I've done here. I've used our gold foil sheet. I stamped in the Versamark and sprinkled it with a gold embossing powder, wishing I could heal your heart. What a beautiful card, deep, rich cherry cobbler with that gold, black, all of that great stuff going on. But boy, that uh, silver, or I'm sorry, gold embossing powder just really makes an extra special card. I love this technique. All right, I have a piece of cardstock and I have stamped my image and heat embossed it. This was done with the Whisper White. Again, you can use the Versamark or the Whisper White, whichever ink pad you prefer, and you, then you can sprinkle it again with either the Clear or the Whisper White. Either one of those are gonna work. Now let me show you how we're going to color it in because that's going to make it really extra special. I'm going to come back in with my Whisper White ink pad, and I've got a blender pen. I'm going to take a clear block, and that's going to give me a nice little palette to work with. I'm going to take my blender pen, and you can see I'm just going to ink that up, and now I can come in, and I can start coloring. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, right now, I'm just kind of getting the outside edges because that ink's pretty thick on there. But the lighter it gets, that means I can come in, start bringing and spreading that ink a little bit thinner and a little bit thinner as it's starting to come off of my blender pen. Isn't that so pretty? So yeah, this is gonna be a great way that I can come in and I can color a really pretty stamped and embossed image and I can color it white. Did you see how fast and easy that was? Awesome. Now to clean uh, the blender pen, I'm just going to come in with some scratch paper, some grid paper, and you're just gonna keep wiping that back and forth until it's clear. I can see I still have some on there. In fact, this is a great use for some scrap black cardstock. Just now I can easily see that I've got all that white ink off of there. As for my clear block, I'm just gonna rinse that underwater and it'll be good to go. 
And you can see I simply took that stamped and colored image, added it to some very vanilla cardstock. There's that ribbon again. It's just a beautiful, soft, very nice image. I love how this card turned out. Here's a really fun technique. Now here I stamped an emboss in black. Now remember I taught you the method where you, if you work very quickly, you can heat set it. Well, maybe working quickly isn't your thing. So I'm gonna teach you another technique uh, of how you can stamp in the colors and not maybe work quite so fast. And to do that, we're going to use our stamp apparatus. So I'm gonna put my cardstock here. I'm going to put my stamped image here. Let me bring down one of the plates so that I'm all set to go. Now for this one, we're gonna use both the Versamark and our Memento black ink pad. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my Versamark and I'm going to ink up my butterflies, bring that over and I'm gonna give that a stamp. Now you're not gonna be able to see that, remember, because it's clear, but now I'm going to come back with my black ink pad. We'll go right over that. We'll give that a nice little press. And this one, I'm going to add the clear embossing powder, and then I can heat set that. Now, when that one is all done, you can see here this particular stamp set floating and fluttering. Well, it actually has a die. And so you can see I just die cut. Oh, by the way, I did color, of course. You can do that with either your Stampin' Write markers or your Stampin' Blends. I love the nice shine that that uh, image is left behind with, don't you? I love it. Oh, get ready. We're gonna blow your mind. Let's do a little two-tone embossing. Oh my goodness, here we did black and we did white. And I'm gonna show you this technique. This is also done with the Stamparatus. I've got a piece of black and white cardstock, and they are exactly the same size, four and a quarter by two and three quarters. I'm gonna very gently get my magnets on there. You wanna make sure there's nothing overlapping, but we really wanna make sure that is stuck down well. I'm going to place my image right here in the middle, bring that plate over, I'm gonna give that a press. It's now ready to go. Remember the technique I just showed you where we took the Versamark pad, we inked up our stamp, brought that over, then we came in with the Memento black ink, inked this up, stamped again. Well, that's exactly what you're going to do here. And remember, those two pieces are separate. So I took one and I sprinkled it, there we go, with the white embossing powder. This one here, I stamped with clear embossing powder. Remember that was stamped in black. So I had the option very easily to go white and black, and then that turned into this really fun black and white card. Thanks for all you do. Did you know you can also heat emboss on vellum? Now, I love to work with vellum. Uh, Stampin' Up's vellum, just so you know, is called cardstock vellum. It's very hard. It's not that really flimsy uh, uh, vellum. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're using a very good quality um, vellum, such as the one sold by Stampin' Up, just because it is so firm. Heat and vellum don't always get along. So a couple tips for heat setting on vellum. You know how I told you to keep your heat tool about three inches away? You might want to make that five or six inches away and really keep that heat tool moving because we don't want that vellum to warp. Now you notice I even did a little coloring on this one and uh, it's a very simple technique. You simply turn your vellum over and then you can take your Stampin' Blends and I'm just going to color in it's so incredibly easy, I just can't even tell you. This is just one of my favorite little techniques. So once those are colored and you flip it over, you get that. And this one here, this was stamped, and then of course I embossed that in the white embossing powder. And look, I just took my Stampin' Blends and went outside the lines for another really fun and different look. Here's a really fun technique. This is called emboss resist. So I stamped, you are my sunshine, and I can do that in either the Versamark or the Whisper White, whichever one. And then you're going to uh, cover that with either the white or the clear embossing powder, again, depending on which ink pad you use. And then I've heat set. Can you see the shine? 
Now let's make it pop and, and resist where we did our heat setting. I have a Daffodil Delight ink pad and then one of our brand new blending brushes. Okay, I gotta tell you, when I got these, I thought it was gonna be just a giant sponge. It's not, it's like, it's like the softest thing ever. I just wanna, like I could put myself to sleep with this. It's, it's teeny tiny little bristles and they're very, very soft. So what we're gonna do is we're going to ink up our blending brush. I like to always dab off a little bit first because I don't want it to be too strong. I want my heaviest color here in the middle. So I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm just gonna blend, blend, blend. And I'm just gonna work my way out. And don't worry, any of that ink that's getting on my sentiment, it's gonna buff right off here in a second. I'll get a little more ink here. Again, I wanna keep my heaviest color in the middle. So I always start in the middle and work my way out. We'll keep adding that gorgeous color. And there you go. Now I've just got a simple microfiber cloth and I'm gonna buff away any of that ink that may have tried to stick to my embossing powder. Now, remember, I should say that is not embossing powder, that is embossed because I've already heat embossed that. This would not work otherwise. So please make sure you heat emboss it first. But now do you see, ooh, that white just pops right off of there. And then there is my finish card. You are my sunshine. I can now take that, rinse that under the sink, get that ink off of there, and I can continue to use that in some other colors. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that you picked up a new uh, idea or two using your heat embossed images. Hey, I would love a thumbs up on YouTube if you're enjoying this masterclass series. And remember, if you missed the previous uh, video on dry embossing, you'll find the link right up there in the corner and that you can catch that one. But head over to simplysimplestamping.com during the month of January, 2021. I'm going to have a complete series for you every Tuesday sharing some unique techniques I think you're gonna enjoy. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Have a fabulous day. I look forward to stamping with you next time. Bye-bye.